Next whiskey, my choice again. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit off piste for me, and it's a whiskey that I've just uh, purchased recently. So it's not an Isla. Well presented, I do like a well presented whiskey. And uh, this is from Glen Goyne. Now, Glen Goyne, I think, is officially a lowland. They're right in the cusp of lowlands and highlands, but it's officially a lowland whiskey. So, uh, you've been to Glen Goyne distillery before, John? Several times. Several yeah. times. Uh, what do you think of it? It's uh, it's it's a lovely distillery. It's fantastic. I mean, right at the side of the road, so it's not difficult to get to. But um, it's uh, it's a lot of history. Uh, beautiful and the the look look of it. In one fact, of, one of the most picturesque. Indeed, stories. indeed, um, so so picturesque. In fact, it's been used in films and TV. Um, Name specifically. Uh, Angel Share. Yeah. Uh, was used in Angel Share and uh, and of course uh, Still Game. I was hoping you would say that. Yes. Uh, Have you done was... a bit of Still Game? <laughs> Great Scottish cycle. Yes, take it out. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it is very picturesque and um, the the. I think it's actually officially, a, a, I might be wrong, once again, I'm bound to your knowledge here, but uh, I think the distillery itself is a Highland distillery, but the maturation warehouse is across the road in the Lowlands, <laughs> so it's kind that, of the, in that situation where it's kind of... Um, that's uh, a stick from the tour guys. There we go, the Highland. Oh, it's a Highland yeah. Even, so yeah, so, so they, the distillery, there's a road that divides the Highlands and the yeah. Lowlands in that part of the country, so they do class it as a Highland but the matured in the Lowlands. But it's, it, it, it's really crazy the fact that it just literally across the road it is in a different part of the whiskey region, which is um, which is crazy. Mm. Uh, Since 1833, he said, a lot of history, so indeed, best indeed. part of 200 years. Um, the Glen, what is it? It's something to do with geese. The Glen of the Geese, yes, Glen Glengoyne. And they do things by touch and by feel. They don't bother with stuff like computers and <laughs> electronics. So they, they make whiskey the way they've always made it. And um, there's no peat or no smoke involved in Glen Goyne. But despite that, it's not a bad distillery. Mm. I, I don't mind it at all. Steam, steam. Um, I think they do something with the, uh, the steam or it's... Uh, like it just keeps saying steam, 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 right? steam, 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 steam. Um, I think it's uh, the way they dry their, 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 their malt, I think they, rather than using any sort of smoke, they don't use smoke, I think they use steam to, to, right. to dry their, their malt, and, and hence the reason why there is just no clean smoke uh, involved uh, in their... Which their... Glen Goines have you tried? Uh, I've tried a, a teapot dram, I've tried um, their entry level, I think it's a 10 year old, yep. um, and I think that is about it. Alright, uh, any idea of what teapot dram, or can you remember, remember much about it? Um, off the top of my head, I think it's something to do with, um, it's uh, back back in the day, uh, something to do with the fact that the distillation or the, 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 the dram that was given to the staff. Yep. Um it was uh, dished out in a teapot. <laughs> it's hard to do with that. Anyway. Got paid, I, I think that they, like once they got put in the teapot mm -hmm. all day at the end of the day that was their the, the staff. There you go. There you go. Uh, it was, was in there somewhere. I was meaning more <laughs> like can you remember tasting the actual whiskey? No, I can't. I can't. It was so long ago. In fact actually part of the uh, one of the courses that I have done in the past. Yep. Um, it finished with a trip to Glengoyne and we did the tour and the blending session. Um, so I actually have a, a blended Glengoyne in the house, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm a big sherry monster. The majority of the Glengoyne blend that I have is made up they of their, their sherry different, how, how, how many, I can't remember how many different samples they give you to blend, don't they? I think there was, there was uh, four or five. Um, and they give you some grain whiskey. There was grain uh, there, yeah, to balance it all out, but I did use very little of that, and, and hence the reason why I walked away with a, uh, pretty much just a sherry cask whiskey. Uh, there was no blending involved, but no, it, it was it was a fantastic experience. In terms of the distillery itself, it, it's not it's not a, a distillery to be avoided. It's a, it's, a, it's a great visit, it's a great tour. Yep. Um, and as I say, it's quite accessible from um, the central belt. Um, just it's quite Glasgow. close to Glasgow, just north of Glasgow. The guys there are really good, really attentive, really knowledgeable, really keen. Um, they either wear kilts or trues, tartan trues, both the girls and the boys. So uh, it's a really nice distillery. 
um, they start with shop. Usually they've got a cask in the shop as well, you can fill your own bottle. Okay. So, um, they've, uh, although they're relatively sort of medium, sort of smallish, they've got quite a few different expressions. They've got all the age statements are 10, I think 12, 15, 18, 21. And they've got a legacy that they call it the teapot dram, which comes out in different batches oh. to commemorate the, the old sort of teapot accumulation of the whiskey. And this one that I've uh, got here. Looking forward to it, I've not tried this one, it's a brand new bottle. This is just basically the Glen Goyne non-age statement cask strength limited batch. So they bring these out periodically as well. Natural colour from our own casks. Um, and we're looking at a 59.2% on this one, John. Wowzer. Yes, so they've just recently rebranded. I don't know if you can remember the old branding. It's very similar, but it's the same. Yeah. The Glen of the Goose. The Glen Goose. Goyne, and they've got the Goose Yeah. Um, beautiful box here, it's actually pretty sturdy, it feels good as well. And uh, let's tell you what it says, so cask strength, unchill filtered, natural colour from thyme and oak casks alone, 59.2%, a peppery tingle that gives way to robust notes of ripe bananas, digestive biscuits and cinnamon, this is Glen Goyne in its purest form, straight from the cask, undiluted and always unchill filtered. So they obviously don't chill filter their whiskey. So why don't we open it and uh, see what it's like? Sounds good to me. I was talking about Spirit of Speyside earlier on um, at the opening dinner uh, the year that I was managing uh, one of the Act the dinner after dinner acts was uh, one of the tour guides from Glen Goyne Distillery. Um, now his name completely escapes me, so this story is going to be completely terrible. Uh, but he <laughs> Just was like all your stories. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, he was he was thoroughly entertaining, and he did a a, a bingo uh, whiskey bingo, which was uh, which was thoroughly entertaining, and um, yeah, it didn't go on too long at all. <laughs> it was, as I was trying to nudge him to say, come on, hurry up. Uh, but no, thoroughly entertaining. Uh, and if he's a tour guide of this place, definitely go and visit. He's, really good uh, he's, uh, he's uh, fabulous. Have so, yeah. Have a smell. I'll just pour it out. Okay. Decent colour. Well, we can lick that bit of I'm spilling it over here. It's shocking. Oh, we're going to smell it out of the bottle, wouldn't it? There's no point in smelling it out of the bottle now. I'm going to smell it out of the bottle. It smells okay. different out of the bottle okay. than it does at the time. My first hit was glue. Out of the bottle. I've got some adhesive, that sort of uh, glue. But it's, it's more, we're, we're into whiskey once it's in the glass. I'm getting, I'm getting a, 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 a almost like a cakey. Oh, I get off that there. Um, sort of Madeira cake or something, something, some sort of Sultana cake or something, I don't know, maybe. Um, Fresh. Oh. I'm still, it's, it's, it's like the back of stamps or something I'm getting now. It's a sort of adhesive, it's not go, full on glue. But nice, it's, it's sort of stationary, not necessarily an adhesive, it's more sort of stationary that you get that fresh paper smell. <laughs> Um, I'm not hitting 59.2% in the nose. It's, not, it's, it's got a bit of a prickle to it. It's not, it's not me. It's not um, as, well, uh, liking it to the, the Balmainic earlier on, the 59, what was Balmainic? Uh, 59 point odds. Um, I think it was slightly stronger than this one, but the prickle from that was mm -hmm. beating you up around yeah, the face. Yeah, but um, was... this is this is really it's quite subtle. Smooth. Nice, not 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 a threat in any way. No. So I'm just I'm just trying to get past stamps and glue right <laughs> now. Stationary. Uh, stationary. It's a stationary. Yeah. A, a freshly stopped stationary cover. <laughs> wasn't one of the notes. Wasn't one of the notes I was thinking. Indeed, of, indeed, it? yeah. Glen Goyne, if you're watching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting that sort of um, cakey, sort of buttery note from it. I'm Madeira gonna, cake. I'm going for more of a sort of orange drizzle cake. Oh, yeah, 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 there's that. There's definitely a citrus note in it. Um, 
lemon drizzle maybe I'm, I'm, sweetness I'm, yeah no, I'm, I'm going for more of a sort of uh, um, you know when you get the oh, I can't look. sugar candy orange halves I know exactly what you're talking about yes. the jelly fruits that yeah, you get at Christmas jelly fruits, you only see we're buying them at Christmas time right? yes no, only yeah. at Christmas but those ones not full on Madeira cake or sort of fruit cake but those jellied orange I was going to start talking about what other things you can only buy at Christmas but we won't go down that road <laughs> um, so that's lovely on the nose that, that's lovely on the nose it's very 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 smooth very subtle but it, it's I don't see subtle sorry it's very smooth and complex layered mm. at the same time mm. I've just found the 59.2%. <laughs> I think this is going to last a long time in the mouth. Mm. So, oh, geez, oh. Yeah. So I said this, I was I was doing a tasting last night, I was telling Keith earlier on, and I, I described this, uh, another whiskey like this as well, nothing to do with actual flavour, but I kind of liken this to tasting a chilli pepper so you take, take the chilli pepper you're kind of thinking this is alright this is fine I can cope with this yeah, it's and it so builds up and builds up and builds up and then boof it's just this great explosion of flavour um, so at the front end you're getting mm. it's, it's but not to be confused it tastes like chilli pepper it's a sensation mm. that chilli oh, yeah, pepper yeah. Yeah. so you're getting a lot of honey sweetness at the very start then it moves on and develops to this huge explosion of of flavour at the end to you know citrus and if I, if I was say drinking this in a bar I would take my time this mm. is, I'd, I'd savour this over a long period of time you, you don't need much of this That's uh, it really is wow. <laughs> the, the finish it's just going to go on and on and on <laughs> It sounds like negative. It's not too complex, but it's what it has is more than enough. It doesn't need any more than it it's, has. It, it's simplistic in its uh, layering, but it's yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. It's it's exactly what it should be. It's exactly what it says in the tin. There you go. You know, it's it's not. There's no. Oh, it's warm though, isn't it? It's lovely. Oof. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, usually you're you're looking for a sort of Christmas cake whiskey for the winter. This would do for the winter. It's not got the full oh, Christmas cake, but absolutely it'll keep you warm. Yeah. Keep you warm. I hope you don't mind me asking how much was this one? It was about eighty pound, I think. Mm. Seventy five, eighty pounds, something like that. Uh, I don't don't mind you asking. It's I think it's, it's a good thing to share. So how much whiskey's cost if you're looking for value or that sort of thing? It's around about eighty pound, maybe eighty five, something like that. Seventy five to eighty five, we'll say. For for the for that sort of whiskey. Perfect. Exactly what it's just it's 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 packing a punch. It's packing exactly the value of the whiskey, right? It's it's brilliant. Call the fire brigade, give me some water, please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what it does. <laughs> there we go. There you go, there you go. <laughs> so hard life, Johnny. Oh, it's geez, tough. It's tough. It really is. Every day we we, we go on. Uh, right, let's see. I've got a few drips in. John's going to do the, the I'll waterfall. Get a wee, I'll get a wee slug. Technique. It's still just slowly. It's, done about it's just now. developing. It's just developing all the time. And there's no... It's, it doesn't... I say it's developing. It's not. It's kind of just remaining. Yes. The, the flavours aren't changing that much. They're still... They're still uh, the citrus notes in there. The sweetness is still there. Toffee notes. A little bit of toffee coming through. Caramel. Um, it's just, it's it's a lovely, lovely mouthfeel, it's, it's great. It's, just, it's like letting a fire go out and it just, it takes hours to go out. Yeah. Um, it, it sustains itself with its heat and that's what that's doing. <clears throat> Oof. Right, water. Okay, nice and fresh and sweet in the nose. Mm. Nothing to worry about there. How yours with the... 50-50 tactic. Well, it's not 50-50, but you know what? I'm actually saying that it probably would be. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's killed the it's killed the the 
the burn of, of that, the, the cast strength um, burn as you'd expect. It's just leaving the... It's almost kind of, it's almost kind of like sort of virgin on sort of dried fruits and, and that sort of Christmassy cake flavour now. It's kind of taken that, take, it's kind of changed that away. There's, a, there's a, it's almost like a, a sprinkle of um, caster sugar or icing sugar, not your rough sugar, finer grain sugar. It's sweeter. Yes. It's lovely. Yeah. The, the, there's the heat's almost disappeared all, all together now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, the the heat has disappeared all together now. Mm. It was a taste sensation. Neat. It's much more palatable and enjoyable with a little bit of water in it. Much prefer with water. I'm actually, I have got a pound of tongue. You know when you have a sort of salt in your yeah, and your yeah. tongue burns. I'm getting a little bit of that with the water. In yeah. It, for for yeah for the whiskey that is from the distilleries came from brilliant great value for money. Um, the flavours that came from that is are sublime. And, and as well, whiskey, it's not all about the flavour, it's about the, the up and down, the front to back, the disappearance, the the heat, it's the, 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 the almost like the physical things it does, and that, that does a lot of physical things, mm. and it's yeah, you're in right. and out and up and down. You're right. Thank you. Uncoordinated finish again, but we're, we're getting there. Okay. I, I, I finished before really? you this time. <laughs> What's your take on that one then? It, it's it's not one to be missed. Um, it's uh, a, if you've got the chance to try it, give it a try. It's something else. Um, it's it's lovely. If you like your cast strength whiskies, it's going to be spot on for you. Um, Glengoyne itself is is a great um, a great go to whisky for a lot of people. Um, and the flavours that come out of your standard Glengoyne, you're getting it from that. But it's time two times ten. I'm gonna have to feed that to other people. I think that's, try this. That, that's not a bad try idea. <laughs> I think that's like it'll go down quicker though, that's the only thing. So we'll we'll watch that. We'll have a little water break, I think, just to, <laughs> to put out the fires. Yes. Thank you for that, that's great. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> okay, so enough of that uh, Lowland Highland nonsense. Back on to the good stuff. John's turn to uh, produce a whiskey. John, what have you got for us now? Well, as I say, if, if I hadn't came with a, a, an angle or two, I think I would have probably been manhandled out the place. So, um, you yeah. Been, yes. <laughs> I came with uh, my first love too. Uh, a Kaulila. Um Now it's the distiller's edition, uh, Muscatel cask finish. Um, now once again, as the majority of my bottles have been so far, it's almost at the end, but um, it is. Uh, it, it's been enjoyed. Um, it's let's say it's uh, double matured in Muscatel cask wood, distilled two thousand six and bottled in two thousand seventeen. It's eleven years old. Um, Forty three percent ABV. Uh, yeah, distiller's edition, um, that's all it's telling me in the bottle. Now on the box, if you want to have a wee nose and nosy of that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> distiller's edition uh, of this golden Kalila uh, is brilliant, clean and refined. It has a deep, sweet and smoky flavour profile that suggests the intense, saturated colour of late afternoon sunshine after a storm has passed. We all know that. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it's it, it was something I I uh, was was given the option of when I went into Loch Fine whiskey shop, um, Loch Fine whiskies yeah, uh, in in Zverini. Um and I asked for something different, and this is what they suggested um, at the time. So I'll put the box away, uh, and we'll see what we think. Yep, I've had this one before. It's an absolute gem. Um, good whiskey shop, Loch Fine Whiskies. In Vinary, over on the west coast, that's not the way, it is on the west coast, it's miles yeah. inland, but it's also on the coast because we have sea lochs in Scotland and in Vinary sits on Loch Fines, hence the name Loch Fine Whiskies. Uh, really good independent whiskey shop, they have a lot of standard whiskies, slightly more niche whiskies, but they also make their own whiskies, they put their own blends, their own vattings as well. So that's for another time. Now, we've got uh, some lovely little glasses here. These are not your standard Glen Cairn glasses. I've just come across these, mm. or come into possession of these. These are from Ardna Hole on the island of Isla, and that's about two miles north 
of the Kalila distillery. So we've pulled out the Ardnaho glasses for you. Uh, John, talk me through your nose of the Kalila Distillers edition. Okay, I'm going to pick up my interesting uh, hand feel glass here, which okay. is uh, which is which is lovely. Um, I, I really like that. In fact, it's quite nice. Anyway, um, it's good. Huh? It's so it holds well. It does. No, it does. And yeah, for anyone that likes maybe a little bit of heat and right, whiskey as well, it's uh, an angle and yeah. it would write itself. It would. It's yes. like it's a wee balls wall, but they never fall down. <laughs> I think this. Um, oh, how many whiskies are we into now? This is getting a little crazy. 14. Uh, um, yeah, 17. Uh, anyway, um, so, on the nose. So, what, did, what would you expect from an island malt? You'd expect smoke, a punch of smoke right off the, off the bat. I'm not getting that from this. There's smokiness in the background, but not right up front. So, for me, there's there's a lot of um, grapey sort of winey notes that you'd get from you'd expect from your muscatel cask. Uh, muscatel wine itself is a dessert wine, so your sweeter wine, which you then would expect maybe a little bit of a sweeter note coming through. And I think you're definitely getting that. I find if you if you sniff it here. You get different, much different from if you sniff it. Okay. In it, um, I get the, I get the smooth, the, the creamy vanilla, and this the sweet dessert wine up here, and I, I do get a wee bit of the smoke. I get a sort of uh, I get a damp smoke up here. Okay. So not your intense uh, typical Isla uh, burnt, you mean burning blood yep. type stuff. Once you go in, um, I get much sweet. I I. I that's where the muscatel is. That's where the sweet sherry is. The sweet, uh, the sweetness. Yeah. So, I, I've heard people. This has never worked for me. But if you smell it here, here, and here, top, middle, and bottom, yeah. you get different noses. I'm not that sophisticated, but what well, I'm doing here is above the, and in. The, and I'm getting different smells. The this, the the science is is you know, the fact that the 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 alcohol vapor is heavier than your aromas. So the alcohol vapor will be traveling at the bottom of the glass. So you don't want it, the, the, that we you kind of think that we be a little more harsher, whereas the, all the subtle aromas, the, the aromas that you're okay. you trying to get there will be at the top of the glass. But trying to actually smell and well look anything but crazy trying to smell it at the top of the Stop glass snorting it by mistake. is uh, yeah crazy. But yeah, you, you, but I've seen people smelling it at the side and off the. You, it's really entirely where whatever you're you feel comfortable with. I think is the. The key thing here, but yeah, uh, I'd go with that a little bit. The top and the middle are very similar. The bottom for more your alcoholy, I'd say. But I'm only, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that too much. <laughs> yeah, it's it, there. There is a. I'm doing this for fun, not for exactly. Fun, indeed, it, indeed. Yes. But beautiful, smooth, creamy, a touch of smoke, and that muscatel sweetness, definitely. Uh, colour wise it's got a bit of colour, it's, not, it's mm. nothing uh, it's nothing wowing but it's got enough about it. Was it 11 year old I think oh, it says? Well, some, yeah, um, yeah 11 year old. Yeah, this, this crazy glass. Um, yeah it's 11 years old um, and yeah it's been um, finished I think in Muscatel cask, is it finished? Or double matured, yeah so it's, it's double matured in Muscatel cask. So. so there's that reassuring, I've tasted it, it's that reassuring Islandness, but it's not too much. Often when I'm introducing island whiskies to people, the Bowmore and the Kalila 12s are where you start and you can go up from there or you can go down from there. So that's got the Kalila 12ness about it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely got the edge taken off it. <clears throat> it's well rounded, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, yeah. That, there's, that, there's that sweetness about it that you wouldn't expect or you wouldn't get from the 12 year old um, Kalila. Um, that you just yeah you know, and but then on the nose I wasn't getting that much peat smoke whereas on the palate the, the smoke's coming through thankfully yes yeah absolutely right around the front of the tongue yeah you definitely know you're you're drinking an ale yeah you're yes definitely not. Mm. I was in the, I'm not sure if I told you this but I was in the the what I do every winter coming up to Christmas with, with my dad and my brother as we're going for a whiskey 
or to go through three or four pubs and we went to the Malt Shovel in Edinburgh and they had this. Now this will used to be about maybe about eight pounds a dram and I think it was down about five pounds, five pound fifty. And I said, Are you sure? Hmm. And they said yes, I was like, right, okay, three of those. Good pub prices, excellent dram. So yes, it's lovely. It's uh, it's not got that strength of the Glen Goyne that we had. It's mm. um, although it's smoky and peaty, it's much mellow and more yeah. comforting. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a nice warm couch. Yeah. This one, it's it's pleasant. It's it, it's it's certainly not for coughing. I, I don't think I'd have more than maybe one mm. of a, an evening next to mm. a fire. You never know, mm. but I think it's um I think it's a a, a, a really pleasant. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's amazing, a, a brilliant, superb. I would say it's absolutely what I would expect from from a Cowleaver distiller's edition. Mm -hmm. From from the, the the cast that's in, it's um it's it's interesting. It's different. Uh, what, exactly what I asked for when I went into the whole thing. I suppose this is. Uh, I mean, it's obvious when I, when I when I say it, but uh, I talk about the Lagavulin sixteen as being as good as there is. And the Lagavulin Distillers Edition is being just a little bit better, and it's a little bit less smoky and a little bit sweeter, and it's the same with this compared to the Kalila Twelve and the Kalila Distillers Edition. It's just a little bit smoother and a little bit sweeter than the the standard Kalila. So um, you'd have to work out whether you thought it was worth the extra investment. I would say yes, just yeah. It's a, it's a lovely whiskey. Have you got a Kalila 12 in your collection and one of these? I'll come round and visit quite happily. I'll be there too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. Yeah, fabulous. It's it's a, a cracking distillery as well. I mean, the the the, the, the still house as well looks out over to the Paps of Dua and across the Sound, um, and it, it's a lovely backdrop. Um, the 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 cellar itself is what well, well, at the time when I was in Isla it was closed. Um, it wasn't accepting any tours because uh, they were refurbishing. Um, but we uh, we had a, a lovely tasting in the the visitor centre, which was which was well received. So, yeah, it's um it's a wonderful part of the island. There's not really any bad parts of the island to be fair. So it's uh, no, 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 no parts, no apart no from parts. apart from the exit <clears throat> where we are going part of Asking or or Port Ellen, but um, yeah. Uh, for anyone who's not so well versed in Gaelic, and I'm not a Gaelic speaker, so Kyle, C-A-O-L, comes into English as K-Y-L-E, and it just means sea straits. So the narrows between Isla and Jura, the, the Kalila just distillery looks over, and Isla is just Isla, so it's the straits of Isla, the, the, the sea narrows of Isla, Kalila. Lovely whiskey, John. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely welcome. It's uh, a pleasure to share it. And as I say, it's not far away from uh, being being finished. Uh, well, this one. Uh, well, I'm talking about the bottle as well. But um, we're bringing me some more. Yes. So you know, all well, that means that the fact that when we finish the bottle, I can get a new one. So we're all good. <laughs> a new Kalila? Or... Well, you, you never know. Um, I, I'm. I'm I, Isla is certainly a, an island I want to explore a bit more of when it comes to whiskey. I, I've had a lot of um, all of the distilleries in Isla, but the, the distillery I'm really keen to try um, is uh, Kilhoman, and I, I've not really tried that much uh, of Kilhoman. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll be keen maybe to try and replace this one with maybe a Kilhoman. The next time, if I'm welcome back, you never know. Um, I might bring a couple home in next time. We'll see. Um, oh, it's gone. What were I was going to say? But water, water. Yes. So let, let's how we. Did you do your usual glug? Yeah. Good. It's getting technical. Now. <laughs> <laughs> There's science. That's science like, that's, uh, Got much more. That's coming at me more now. So what? Uh, so whatever, whatever peat I was getting on the nose before is now completely gone. I'm not getting any peat on the nose at all. I, I don't know if that's no. just unless the fact I'm just I, I have it on my palate now. I don't know. There's no peat, but I'm getting that. There's a there's a really strong under coming in, which I think is the muscatel again. It's that fortified sweetness. Yeah, there's definitely a sweetness there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's that whiny, whiny sort of woody note that I, I wasn't getting any wood before, but I'm kind of getting a little bit now. Well, we've not mentioned wood at all with this one. 
just a little bit. And I'm also getting that, um, it's not pear drops, it's that sensation, but it's yeah, not that smell. Yeah, not far off it. Um, sort of lemon, if there, if there was such a thing as lemon drops. But it's definitely a citrus note there, yeah. A little bit of wood in there, a little bit of smoke, but much more sweet, sharper with the water. Yeah, I think it's a bit more, a bit more balanced with a bit of, a bit of water. I think I, I, I'm not saying it was unbalanced without it, but the nose now, back, the, the peak's not, the, the smoke's no. no longer a factor now. Oh, okay. It's it's just almost gone. Um, and the sweetness is now the, the the main player, which it was before on the nose, but it wasn't on the palate. Where it is now on the, the palate, it's it's definitely there. And the citrus is coming through, a big punch of citrus now, right in the, the finish. Good whiskey, good dram. Thank you for bringing it. You're very welcome. Um, We're almost there. I'm yeah. almost finishing. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, distiller's edition, thumbs up. <laughs>